This is the ultimate guide for how to win your sleep apnea rating, whether you were diagnosed in service, diagnosed out of service, trying to win a service connection, anything sleep apnea, VA claims, this is gonna be your video and quick. So let's get right into it. First thing, I wanna dispel some common misconceptions that I see in regards to OSA, obstructive sleep apnea. Number one is that I see veterans who are diagnosed while in service. They're diagnosed, okay, we, we see the diagnosis on your active duty service treatment records because you're gonna pull up your service treatment records before you do anything in your VA claim, right? And you're trying to prove service connection too hard, okay? You were diagnosed with OSA in service, you got a sleep study in service, you're good, you, have, you are implicitly service connected. You don't have to go and try to make up this elaborate story about what you, why you think that you got diagnosis, why you think you got OSA from your active duty service. All you're going to risk is an ego. You're gonna risk damaging an ego. This is the real world. I teach you how to win in the real world. You're gonna risk, who's this guy? Who's this guy think he is? Does he have a medical degree? I don't agree that this was caused by that. That's all you're risking. Chill out, you were diagnosed in service, take the implicit service connection. And for those of you diagnosed after service, please, you're gonna to want to stay to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you how to win, win, win all these secondary service connections through sleep apnea here. I'm gonna show you that. Okay, now number two is I don't use my CPAP. Coach Jordan, I don't use my CPAP. They're, they're not going to allow me to get a rating for CPAP. Roger that, no one cares. And here's why. 38 CFR, here is the criteria for a 50% rating. 50%. You require the use of a breathing assistance device such as a CPAP machine. Where in there does it say that you have to use it, right? This is very black and white. Nowhere in there does it say you have to use it. So the ultimate two things that we have here, obstructive sleep apnea, were you prescribed a CPAP? Do you have a service connection? If you were diagnosed in service, the answer is yes. So if you had a sleep study, which you were prescribed a CPAP, and you were diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea in service, that's a check, that's a check, that's a 50% rating. Just need to claim it, tie things together with the bulletproof personal statement, it's too easy. You don't have to try to convince anything too hard. Okay, here's the second thing, right? Now, here's for my people who didn't get diagnosed in service, okay? If you did not get diagnosed in service, we're gonna have to do a little bit more, more legwork. Let me show you exactly what this looks like. This is typically going to be two ways that you can get service connected for sleep apnea. Number one is to go the hard way, in my opinion, which is to get buddy letters and do personal statements. Personal statements are fantastic. You're gonna to need to do that regardless for every single claim. But one is getting buddy letters, okay? This is what people kind of recommend on YouTube and I just not a, I'm not a fan. Getting buddy letters, this, is means, uh, this means maybe you're uh, spouse at the time, maybe a girlfriend, uh, your battle buddy, trying to get them on document to write on the official VA form that they saw you or experienced you gasping in your sleep, waking up and all that. And you try to corroborate all this evidence and send it in and you cross your fingers hoping that the VA rater will adjudicate you favorably. I'm not a fan of that, okay? But it is an option. Number two, and what I do recommend, is secondary claims, okay? Secondary claims. Now, there's two ways to do this. Number one is your physical ailments. So let's say you have a right knee condition. Let's say you have a back condition, something like that. The physical ailments, typically the route to go is through weight gain. So hey, your right knee affected your ability to exercise, which led to weight gain, which of course is a risk factor, a major risk factor for obstructive sleep apnea. What about mental conditions, PTSD? Did you know that PTSD has a huge link to sleep apnea. And did you know that there's scientific evidence for that? And that is what you should be referencing in your personal statement. I'll show you how here. So this is what I do for people, uh, my clients here at VA Claims Academy, for instance, when they have me write custom personal statements, I will do the research and reference scientific studies and do a scientific notation in that format in the actual personal statement itself oftentimes because I'm looking right here. I have PTSD and sleep apnea. 
Krakow, Melendez, Dr. Peterson, okay? And this is a study in 2001, Complex Insomnia, Sleep Disorders, Breathing in a Consecutive Series of Crime Victims with Nightmares and PTSD. So it's a post-traumatic stress disorder and obstructive sleep apnea study, and I've researched it, and it looks compelling to me. These are the things that you're going to research, okay? Let's see. Depression and sleep apnea. We have a study from 2006, okay, in the Archives of Internal Medicine. We have tinnitus and sleep apnea, some German name I won't even pronounce, okay? Distinguishing between subjectively perceived loudness and tinnitus-related stress. Investigation in Italy about sleep apnea, okay? These are the things that you're going to want to do for your advanced, advanced, aggressive personal statements. And no one really tells you this. What you are doing, when you reference these through scientific notation, and you are looking for, hey, PTSD may have caused sleep apnea. Uh, and you get an excess letter, of course. Hey, my tinnitus caused sleep apnea. You're going to have to make it more of a pain for them to, not, to deny you than it is to adjudicate you. What do I mean by that? When a VA ranger gets a personal statement, and this thing has scientific notation at the bottom, referencing a bunch of studies that this person cannot even pronounce, it looks like you know what you're doing. Now, all of a sudden, the lazy thing to do is not to deny you because they're going to have to give you a reason to deny you, meaning they're probably going to feel like they have to actually look at these studies, read through some of it, read through the summary at least, and find out why it isn't compelling to them. All of a sudden, the easy path to do as a government worker is to actually approve you. This is what you want. This is playing chestnut checkers. We want to exert our influence over the process and make it easy for them to say yes to you, okay? I really hope this makes sense. And for the last little bit, for those of you still here, I really wanna give you kind of a real world tip here for using your CPAP. Whenever you get prescribed a CPAP, guys, they have those machines tuned so wrong for us. The high end for the amount of pressure blowed through your nose, it feels like you're drowning in air. I'm gonna recommend you a channel. It's called, I'll link it in the description. It's called CPAP Reviews. Do yourself a favor. If you find yourself waking up or feeling sleepy using these CPAPs, look at his channel. He has a perfect video that uh, teaches you how to kind of tune and turn down the maximum output of these machines. And I have been sleeping like a baby ever since. It really is life-changing, so I hope that helps you. Anyway, go ahead and hit a like button, please, because it helps me to deliver value in a manner that respects your time and get that to you quickly, okay? Share this with a veteran who needs it. We all need this information. So go ahead and share this around, post it to your Facebook. Other than that, I'll see you next time. Cheers.